Golden Boy Promotions et Interbox présente l'événement principal. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event. 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF Middleweight Championship of the World. 12 rounds for the champion of the monde. Sponsored by Videotron, La Caja Sports, Casino of Montreal, Coors Light, and Quebec Tourism. Sanctioned by Le Régie des Arcades de Coors de Jeux de Québec. Represented by Michel Hamlin. Under the supervision of Dr. Pierre Mounier and Dr. Marc Gagné. IBF President Marion Mohamed. Supervisor for the IBF, Larry Hazard Sr. At ringside, the three judges. Les trois juges. Richard de Carrefil. Joseph Pasquale and Pasquale Procopio. And inside the ring, your referee in charge of the action, Lepitra Benji Estevez. And now, ladies and gentlemen, and maintenant, the Ville Magnifique de Quebec, Mesdames et Messieurs, Dans le coin bleu, le bleu corner, official weight, 166 three quarter pounds in 30 professional fights, 28 victories, including 21 knockouts, with only two defeats. From Jesus del Monte, Guanajuato, Mexico, now fighting out of La Habra, California, USA, the IBF, number one ranked super middleweight contender in the world. Le challenger, Librado Andrade. Dans le coin rouge, the red corner, a visual weight, 166 three quarter pounds. A perfect professional record consisting of 24 fights. 24 victories, including 19 knockouts, originally from Galat, Romania. Now, living and fighting out of Montreal, Quebec, Canada, the reigning, defending, undefeated IBF super middleweight champion du monde. Well, it's boxer versus brawler, rock star versus rock. And Lebrano Andrade's got the chin of a rock. He's got tendon problems in both of his elbows. He says it hurts to try to keep his hands up. He says when he sees the punches coming, he just relaxes his body and he says it energizes him to get hit. Lennox, in all of your years in boxing, you've never heard such an explanation. No, uh, you know, it's it's amazing that, you know, he loves to get hit. Maybe that, you know, really eggs him on. People that get hit. And he actually feels that he's he's sapping the other person's energy when he gets hit. Great, let him out. Remember in that last fight with the controversial ending that we showed you. Pute was comfortably in front of the scorecards. He needed a knockout that, as Max, you pointed out, it looked like he got twice. Yeah, well, if you, if, 
spend 21 seconds uh, unable to fight. Been knocked out. And Butte know he knows he was knocked out, and that's why he's been obsessed with Lebrado Andrade every day by his own admission since then. Andrade touches Butte with a right hand as Butte steps back and out of range of any serious damage. Butte born in Romania. Came to Canada in 2003. Embraced the country, embraced the fan base. Immediately learned French and loves it here. And they have obviously embraced him. I mean, there aren't a lot of fighters who can sell out an arena an hour after tickets go on sale. His main base is Montreal. And the only reason why this fight was not at the Bell Center, where they could have sold more seats, 21,000, is because the Canadians are playing at home tonight. Butte will control the space. That's what he did so well through 11 and a half rounds. Shoots a straight left hand and connects. To stay out of range right now. He's just picking his spots, picking, picking his moments, trying to not to mix it up too early. Yeah, well, guess what? Boutte is outboxing Lebrado and Trotty early. <laughs> <laughs> that was, this is no shock so far. The question is, as this fight progresses, and Andrade is still there, as, as he has always been so far in his career. Pressure builds. How will Butte respond? The left hand from Butte. Andrade tries to jump in. Butte using good movement. Keeping Andrade off pace. Sticking his punches and staying away from danger. End of round number one. Breathe, breathe. It's a good first round. All right. Be calm when you move around. You look a little tense out there. Remain calm and collective. You need to bring your jab out a little more. That's, that's part of the game plan. Let's get the shit out of him, you understand? But when he's on ropes, you do, you're banging in the body. You follow me? Keep moving ahead, nice and fast. And sometimes he's moving to the side, do the cross, try to hook around. Howard Grant, the quarter of Lebrado Andrade. That's his number one corner person, his wife, Josie. The two kids are at home, Alondra and Lee. Alondra 10, Lee 7. Watching at home. Round number two underway between Butte and Andrade. Andrade landed eight of 48 in the first round according to Copy Box. Seven of those connects of course with power shots. Counter left hand from Butte. Andrade did something very special there. You know Butte was trying to get out of range and he held his left hand and came back and threw two right hands and hit him. Bob Papa, Lennox Lewis, Max Kellerman. HBO's Boxing After Dark from a sold out Pepsi Colisee in Quebec City, Canada. Lucien Boutte in the white and red trunks, making the fourth defense of his 168 pound title against Lebrado Andrade. These two met 13 months ago with Boutte winning a controversial 12 round decision when it looked like Andrade had him knocked out in the final seconds of the round. 12. Marlon Wright, the referee, allowed 21 seconds to elapse in the final bell, and Butte was a winner. Glenn Johnson, for his fight with Chad Dawson in preparation, used Butte as a sparring partner, um, which is about the best sparring you can get preparing for Chad Dawson, a real good southpaw in this weight area. But, you know, at the same time, Butte was sparring with Glenn Johnson, preparing for Lebrado Andrade, and not really a better person to prepare you for Andrade than Glenn Johnson, himself a rock, who keeps coming. 
Alex, how can Andrade kind of get his game working a little bit, or is it just naturally, you know, he needs to just start getting hit <laughs> to get his game working? Well, I know if he gets hit, it's going to wake him up even a little bit more. But um, in the first fight, he felt he should have stepped it up a little earlier. In this fight, he said he's going to step it up even more. So we're yet to see him step it up. He, he needs to try and get to Butte. He got hit a couple times there. Yeah. And he takes a right hook to the head. Andrade really wants to hit him. He would love if this was a smaller ring, but it's not. So he has to do his due diligence and try and cut off the ring and try and get to Butte. Seems to me Butte is trying to not fight on the same kind of nervous energy that he sometimes does that he did in the first fight and is trying to fight a more relaxed fight. But as a result, I think Andrade's been able to connect a little bit more early here. Well, Butte doesn't look that relaxed right now. He looks a little bit more tense than we've seen him in the past. Andrade right on the belt line of Butte as we end round number two. Two of 12 in the Bucks. Uh, December 8th, don't miss the next installment of Joe Buck Live. Among his guests, Pedro Martinez, Brian Erlacher, Michael Strahan, and Floyd Mayweather. January 26 kicks off a four episode run of the Emmy Award winning series 24 7. But this time around, we'll leave boxing behind and take you inside the lives of NASCAR superstar Jimmy Johnson and his teammates as they prepare for the Daytona 500. Don't fight his fight, Lucian. Right now, if you want to remain champion, fight your fight. As it is right now, you're fighting Labrador's fight. Good advice from Stefan LaRoche as we begin round number three, the accomplished trainer of Lucian Boutet. Lennox, so far, I mean, uh, your assessment of what you've seen from Boutte and Andrade. Yeah, Boutte seems a little tense. Got a lot of nervous energy out there. As you can tell, when he came back to the corner, he, you know, it blew out like if he was tired. And he's not tired, he's in great shape, but he's a bit tense. That's making him tired. And remember, he says that fatigue is the reason why he got hurt late in that fight in round 12 against Andrade. Well, you know, speaking with him, he said he's in a lot better shape, mentally prepared for this fight, and he wants to prove that he's going to be outstanding for the rest of the fight, especially for the end, and, and show the world that that wasn't him that last fight, especially and, and at maybe, the end of the round. And maybe you're right, Lennox, in the sense that he's aware that this guy basically stopped him in their last fight, and so there's natural nervousness. But I think that he's tr he's conscious of it. He's trying to relax. And that's why he's fighting a little bit more of Andrade's fight. Beautiful left hand from Boutte. Yeah, he threw a hook to the body and then a straight left hand. Rock back Andrade. Andrade says that those things energize him. We'll see if he's energized. Good left hand again by Boutte. And another. Another one. I mean, who takes shots like that without blinking? And comes straight back. He says when he sees him coming, his body just goes numb and relaxed. And he doesn't feel it. It's an interesting cat, Lebrano Andrade. He's having some success with the right hand. Andrade is. Lennox, how discouraging is that for a fighter like Butte, where you can literally hit a guy with clean shots repeatedly, and he's just right there back in front of you? You know, I remember when I was boxing in the amateurs, and I went up to East Germany, and I was hitting this guy, and I knew I hit him with my best shot. And he just smiled at me, and it's like, wow, all of a sudden, it just sapped my energy. I felt weak. I said, wow, I don't have no power in my hands. Mentally, it has an effect on you. A combination by Pute on the inside. 
I guess the one good thing for Butte is he experienced that already over 12 rounds against Andrade. He knows he's going to hit him with some great shots, and this guy's not going to go away. Well, this is why he's, he's, he looks like he's conserving his energy a little bit, waiting for the late, late round so he can finish. End of three. Now we're going to see the first good combination by Butte. First good combination. Three punch combination. And here's a straight left. Square in the face. Butte landed 62% of his power punches in that round. 16 of 26 as we get set for the bell to begin round number four here in Quebec. Let's check in with our unofficial <laughs> ringside score, Harold. Let okay, it. Bob. Three rounds to nothing. 30 to 27. Lucian Boutte. Bob, I gotta tell you, this guy is about as slick as anyone I've ever seen. I mean, you know, I've never seen a southpaw with a right up jam like he throws. I mean, he's real good legs, great movement, nice ring generalship, and he keeps hitting him with that right up jab. And then when, when Loretto and Brady's looking for the jab, he comes across with that straight left hand. In round three, he landed more clean power shots than he did in rounds one and two. Three to nothing, Boutte. Hey, one thing here to start round number four, guys. Uh, Andrade landed a couple of good uppercuts that seemed to get the attention of Boutte in a hurry. Yeah, Boutte's winning every round, of course, but I feel like Andrade's doing better than he was in the first fight. Well, he's actually I thought round up. number two was in the balance. Of number two. He's picking up the pace, though. But a good start to round four, at least. The old adage in boxing is if one fighter knocks out another fighter, he'll do it again in the rematch only quicker. The question is, was that a knockout in the first fight in Boutet's mind, I suppose? I guess the thing that it, you see here, Lennox, possibly, in Max, is that Boutet has landed some very clean punches to Andrade. And he just, you know, as he does, he stands there and he keeps coming back. But it seems as if in this round, some of these power shots that Andrade's landing are causing Boutet a moment of pause. Well, and then it, here's the... Not that this round is difficult to score right now, but the subjective nature of scoring. Boutte lands really hard against the Andrade with a rock solid chin. Andrade does not land as hard. Oh! oh left hand drops Andrade! Oh! He didn't see that one coming. It's only the second time Andrade's ever been off his feet. And it was a quick punch, too. Straight on the chin. Remember, he dropped him in round 10 of their first fight. Good left hand inside. Andrade says it's not a problem when he takes big shots, when he sees them. I don't think he saw that left. Well, what happens is when you keep tapping on the rock, any rock, eventually it will break. Well, as I was saying, <laughs> that Andrade has the rock solid chin. Boutte just flattened him with him. With a punch he didn't see coming, as you mentioned. Oh, and yeah. Andrade is down again. I think he's hurt badly. I mean, was that a body punch or a head punch? He seems hurt. I think it was a body shot. Wow. And guys. Just like Daniel Zaragoza, who was never stopped in his career until he fought Eric Morales. When he was finally stopped, it was with a body shot. Lucian Boutte wanted to erase the doubts of their first fight, and he did it emphatically tonight. Well, like I said, in an outstanding fashion. And incidentally, I don't think this is a case of overestimating Andrade's ability to take a punch. That's well documented in his career so far. That's 
Kute just being sensational. Well, most guys that can take head punches all day usually are soft in the body, as in the case this time. Sixteen thousand five hundred fans came to see Lucian Butte erase any doubts, and he did. You know, a lot of people are shocked because they thought this fight was going to go the distance. And I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure. We the, really need to see the replay on this and uh, we're going to take a look at the first one which is a short left inside that Andrade never saw. Knockdown number one. As good as it gets Lennox. And there wasn't there wasn't too much power behind that It was just more of a quick jarring shot. Take a look at it again. Step right into it. Good short punch Lennox. But Andrade seemed okay after that. Even gave a little smile while he was down. And a wink. And then when Boutte couldn't finish him to the head. These are all the first knockdown. Three different angles. The super slow-mo. And that's just a good, clean, short punch that Andrade didn't see coming. Now here's the end. Boom. Right there. Left oh. hand right to the stomach and ribs. Knocked the air right out of him. He couldn't recover at all. And it must have been a perfect shot because, you know, when you get hit in the body and it's still early rounds, you know, you can, re you can really recover from that. But in this situation, he wasn't able to recover. And I think he caught him just perfectly. There could be even a rib problem. Because that seemed like a, a, a truly big blow, really effective. So it may be a rib problem and not an air problem. Michael Buffer has the official time of the stoppage. Mesdames et Messieurs, referee Benji Estevez counts to 10. The official time, two minutes, 57 seconds, round number four. The winner, still undefeated, still the IBF super middleweight champion du monde, de Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Lucian Boutte makes the fourth defense of his championship, an impressive one, stopping Lebrado Andrade in round number four. Stefan LaRoche, his trainer, giving us some words of joy. Take a look at the numbers landed. Boutte had the edge. By 12, Andrade was a bit busier. Butte dropping him twice in the fourth round. Once a short left to the chin, and then the telling blow, the final blow, that left hook right to the rib cage, and Andrade would not make the count. You see the power punches. Five more landed by Butte. Again, Andrade busier, but Butte placed them well, connecting at 52%. All right, Max Kellerman is standing by with the champion, Lucian Boutte. Congratulations, Lucian. Wow. Take me through the fight. Yeah. First time, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, HBO, for showing my fight. I respect my plan de match. I was really training for it. I have a camp of training in Florida for two months. I have a good sparring partner. And this morning, this morning. I respected the game plan. 
We went down to Florida, trained hard, had tremendous sparring partners, and tonight was my night. Everything went as planned. Did you think that you could hurt him? Did you think you could stop him as you did? Pensais-tu que tu pouvais le, lui faire mal et l'arrêter comme tu l'as fait? Bien sûr, bien sûr, j'ai pensé à ça, je me suis entraîné à ça. J'ai été vraiment en forme, je l'ai senti, je l'ai touché solidement, j'ai resté calme, puis le combat c'était comme je voulu, comme on a voulu. Yes, I did. That's what I trained for. That was the game plan, and everything went as planned, and I was confident from the ring of the bell. You say that everything went as planned, but after the first round, your corner said you can't fight him that way. What, what did they see that they didn't like? Qu'est-ce qu'ils ont vu après le premier round? Qu'est-ce que ton entraîneur a vu après le premier round qui allait pas bien ou qu'il n'aimait pas? Stéphane m'a dit clairement euh, dans le, après le premier round, il m'a dit si tu utilises les, les jabs, tu apprécies bien la distance, c'est la clé du combat. Ça va être facilement. C'est lui qui va tomber ton, sur, sur ta gauche. Tu respectes ton plan, il va être au plancher. His trainer said, you've got to use your jab effectively, and if you do so, he will go down. You shot a beautiful short left hand that put him down at first. Did you think he was getting up? On, on a travaillé vraiment beaucoup pendant l'entraînement avec cette coup de poing là. On a regardé des combats comme Lennox Lewis qui l'a tombé Rahman. C'est la même coup de poing. Puis on a travaillé vraiment pour c'était la surprise que on a préparé pour ce soir. That's the surprise we worked on for tonight. Lennox Lewis did it against Rahman. We could do the same thing, and we did what we had to do. Lennox Lewis said before the fight started on HBO that after his first fight with Rachman, he thought about Rachman all the time as you thought about Boutte because he felt that that really wasn't him who lost to Rachman. He finally beat Rachman and that was the real Lennox Lewis. How do you feel right now having just knocked out Librato Andrade? Lennox Lewis, après son combat contre Rachman, se sentait le vrai Lennox Lewis. Il avait fait ce qu'il fallait pour le battre. Toi, maintenant, comment tu te sens à la suite de ce deuxième combat contre lui? <laughs> je me sens comme, exactement comme il a dit. Je me sens le vrai Lucien en bouteille. Ce soir, c'était le vrai Lucien en bouteille. Ça fait 12 ans depuis que je ne me suis pas senti comme ça. Mais ce soir, c'était le vrai Lucien en bouteille. Puis j'ai montré à tout le monde que le premier combat, c'était juste un accident la dernière round. Puis j'ai montré que je mérite cette ceinture-là. Je mérite de rester champion. He says, I feel exactly like Lennox felt at the time. And he says, I haven't felt this good in two years. What people saw tonight was a real Lucian Butte. And he said, I said it all along. The first one was an accident at the end of the fight. Tonight, you saw the real Lucian Butte. Congratulations, Lucian. Tremendous performance. Something else? Uh, thank you. I say thank you the gym de Florida, Steve. Trump Jim, thank you very much for the uh, m'a aidé là-bas pour nous donner donner la place pour s'entraîner. He thanks everyone and especially the people down there in Florida for allowing him to train there and giving him the facilities to prepare for this fight. Thank you all tonight. Congratulations Lucian. Bob An impressive performance here in Quebec in front of a sold out crowd at Pepsi Colise. Born in Romania, now fighting full time out of Canada. Even sprinkled in a little English. He promised us during our fighter meeting yesterday that the next time that you have me on HBO, I will be able to converse with you in English. But Lennox, the most impressive thing is he experienced that joy like you did against Rockman, yes. but he did it in an impressive fashion as he was able to stop a guy that's not stoppable. Right. I mean, he was focused on this fight. He threw some great punches. He was moving well. I, f I think he even surprised himself. And uh, it's always great to surprise yourself uh, because I know how that feels. Well, it was a left hand short that dropped him the first time, then a left hand to the body that took the sails right out of Lebrado Andrade. We turn things back over to Max Kellerman. And Max, you, know, you take a look at this night, and let's face it, it started off a little disappointing with Ali Funiga, who we thought, and everybody in this building thought, won a unanimous decision against Johan Guzman. It was ruled a majority draw. That was a joke. But what we saw in the ring in our main event was no joke. That was unbelievable. Uh, Boutte, before the first Andrade fight, was considered by most to be the rising star of the super middleweight division. And then after the Andrade fight, and with this tournament that he's not in, 
his star kind of waned, at least in, in the United States. Um, there was a thought that, look, if you can't beat Andrade, who is very tough but certainly beatable, how good could this guy be? Really, he was stopped in their first fight. That's how good Lucien Boutet could be. Very, very good. Not only did he outbox Andrade and then drop him with a vicious left hand, but had the ring IQ to see that no matter how much he followed up to the head, Andrade was taking the shots and then went down to the body to stop him. To stop him, a complete spectacular performance by the 168-pound star Lucien Boutet. Well, he was spectacular tonight, and he was very impressive, Max. Good job as always, as Lucien Boutet uh, is a star here in Canada, and he was awesome tonight. So. We got things started a fight that for the 135 pound title that ended with a lot of question marks a very very.